Hello everybody and welcome back to today's video where we will be covering the spawning process and evaluation process. Now over the next few videos we will be going to write a genetic algorithm to solve a well-known problem in software engineering called the traveling salesman problem. For those of you who are unfamiliar the problem goes a little something like this. You're a salesman and you have 10 towns that you need to visit but you're traveling with a coworker who is crazy annoying. I might have modified it a little bit. Now, because this coworker is so annoying, they make you wanna minimize your travel time between towns that you have to spend with them. Now, given that you can go directly from any town to any other town, what sequence of towns minimizes your total travel distance? So I'm sure your first question is going to be, okay, where are the towns? Show me on a map. So here you go. So what about now? Well, up front, this doesn't seem like the problem is that difficult, right? The number of potential solutions is equal to the factorial of the number of towns. Uh, a real quick refresher for those of you unfamiliar with factorials, they are the number itself multiplied by every integer number less than it. So for 10, that's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 and so on. That means for 10 towns, this is roughly 3.6 million potential solutions. Computers are pretty fast, so for 10 towns, we could probably use the brute force approach where we literally try every possible combination and get the answer pretty quickly. Now, what if this scenario was changed slightly and it was 20 towns? Well, now there are 2.4 million, million, million potential solutions. That's 24 followed by 17 zeros. Clearly the brute force approach wouldn't work here, at least not on my home PC. And this is the type of problem that genetic algorithms thrive in, where you have an ability to create potential solutions quite easily, and you have the ability to evaluate or test how good these solutions are quite easily. But knowing the way to create the best solution to the problem is quite difficult. So let's go back to our scenario with 10 towns. I've included a link in the description to a GitHub repo that has a C-sharp project leveraging the SFML library to provide some basic visual feedback as we go through the process of writing this all up. I encourage you to grab a copy of that now and follow along as we go. If you don't have Visual Studio installed, there is a link in the description to the free community version, so go ahead and grab that now. Feel free to pause this video and do that. I don't mind waiting. Okay, so I'm hoping that you've got Visual Studio installed and opening the project, we just need to quickly update our reference paths by clicking on the project and going to the properties and then clicking on reference paths and deleting the one that's there and adding one for lib. Great, so now we should be able to close that and run without any problems. So doing so, we see a map of 10 towns, but we haven't drawn the potential paths here because things would be a little bit messy with every possible path drawn. Uh, but keep in mind that we can go from any town to any other town. So let's take a look over the code that is currently making this possible, and then we can take a look at implementing the spawning of our population. In our game class, we have some setup code in the constructor where we're creating a new window to show our visualization, and then we're adding a screen to hold the logic for updating and displaying our towns. Lastly, we're creating a new instance of our world class, which is where our population of our GA will live and breed. Jumping inside the world class, we can see that in the constructor, we're creating a new list to hold our individuals. Then we have a few methods, a spawn method that will attempt to add 100 individuals. Uh, this will currently throw a not implemented exception, but don't worry, we will fix that very soon. We also have a method called do generation that we will complete in a future video, as well as a method that gets us the best individual in the population at the current time. So jumping back to the game class, you can see that we have a run method, which is where all the magic happens. Before we enter the main loop of our program, we call our spawn method on our world. Again, uh, this right now will crash or it will throw the not implemented exception, but it won't do that for long. Then inside our first simulation loop, we will first clear the screen so that we have a blank canvas to work on. We will then update the current visualization to show the path of the best individual in our population. For each generation, we will draw the path of the best individual before proceeding to the next generation. So something should probably stick out at you there. We wanna draw the best individual on the screen, but we don't currently have a method of determining how good 
one individual is from another. So we're also going to need to write that, our fitness evaluation. So step one, what does an individual solution look like? Well, we have to visit every town in our map and our towns in our map are, can be represented by the numbers zero through nine. So an individual could take the form of a list of integers where the list has to contain all values between zero and nine in some random order with no duplicates. There are so many ways that this problem could be represented. If you had a different idea, it would most likely also work. Feel free to follow along using your approach for the individuals. But for now, we are going to go with our list of integers. Jumping back to our world class, we can see that a method has been generously left here for us by someone, and we can fill it with some code that would generate our individual. Just taking a brief look at our individual, we can see that we need to construct our individual with a list of integers representing the sequence of towns. So the first thing that we are going to do is create a list with the numbers zero through nine consecutively. Now in C-sharp, this is super simple. Uh, we are going to write var sequence is equal to enumerable dot range. And this method takes in the start and the count. So in our case, that is zero and 10. And then we're going to call dot to list to enumerate over that range. So now that we have our sequence, we need to shuffle it. Again, this may be more difficult in other languages, but in C-sharp, I've written a little extension method called shuffle shown here. Uh, the shuffle method is actually very simple. We loop over each of the items in the list and we switch it with a random other element in the list. So jumping back to the spawn method, we will simply call sequence.shuffle, uh, which will shuffle the list in place. Let's put a breakpoint here and run our code so that we can inspect our sequence variable. So now that we've hit our breakpoint, we can hover over the variable and click the little drop down arrow. And awesome, we have our very first sequence. So now that we have a sequence, the last thing that we need to do is create our individual or neighbor, which takes the sequence that we have just created as its constructor argument. Now, the last thing we need to do is jump back over to our main loop in our game class. And in the update sequence method, we now want to pass in the sequence for our best individual. Fortunately, we have a method that has been provided to us that does this. So we can just type world.getBestIndividual.sequence. So let's click run and see what happens. Great, it looks like the sequences are being generated and they're also being visualized. So by eye, you can probably see that some of these are better than the others, but something seems kind of fishy here. If we jump back to our game class, we can see that in our main run loop, we are calling the update method of the simulation screen and we're passing it the sequence of the best individual in our population to show it. But we don't currently have any method of determining what the best individual is. So how are we deciding what individual to show? Going to the definition of best neighbor, we can see that we're ordering the individuals by their fitness and then grabbing the one that's most fit. So going to the fitness definition, we can see that we're randomly generating a number between zero and one. So every frame, which for us is one second, we're effectively choosing a random individual in the population to display. So let's get rid of that and work out what our fitness calculation should actually be. As we're saying there are direct paths from every town to every other town, we can visualize a path between any two towns as the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle. We also know the difference in X, and the difference in y, because we know the positions of the two towns. So if we have a right angled triangle and we know two of the lengths, the calculation of the third is some pretty simple Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or in other words, C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. As we wanna minimize the total distance of the sequence, we need to sum up all of the distances for the trips taken between towns. So let's create a loop that iterates over each of the paths and sums the distances of the paths. Inside our loop, let's explicitly make each component its own variable for readability. So let's say that we have our current town, which we'll call that from town, and the town we're about to travel to, let's call that to town. We also have our x, which is to town dot x minus from town dot x. And we have y, which is to town dot y minus from town dot y. We can then calculate our distance d, which is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, as we talked about before. 
For now, as we want to minimize the distance, the fitness of our individuals can simply be the total distance taken for this sequence. Perfect. So before we hit run again, let's just take a minute to think about what we're expecting to see from the visualization. We're going to generate a population of 100 individuals. We're then going to get the fitness of each of them and visualize the one that has the best fitness. In our case, the one that has the lowest total travel distance. Then once per second, we're going to update the visualization to show the best individual. However, as we actually aren't doing any breeding yet, that will come in a later video. So we'd expect each frame to see the same individual with no change. Hitting run, this is exactly what we're seeing. So I believe some congratulations are in order. You have just written a method of spawning individuals for your very own genetic algorithm. And you've also written an evaluator to determine how fit each of the individuals are. Now, before I end the video, I want to leave you guys with a challenge. In almost all genetic algorithms, we can often achieve better results through larger populations. So ensuring that our code runs quickly and efficiently is quite important. What is one simple way that we could improve the speed of our current evaluation method. Please leave your comments down below with ways that you believe we could improve on our current system. Okay, so that will be everything for today. Our next video will dive into the breeding process where we will get to watch our population of individuals fight through the evolutionary process to become fitter while simultaneously saving us travel time with that damn annoying coworker.